So, in the previous lecture, we have learned the first concept. Concept 1 about leap years and leap centuries. The significance of finding a leap century is that leap century is exactly divisible by 400. Any year which comes after the leap century, for example, we have take 2000 which is a leap century. So, the immediate next day after the leap century, that means what is the immediate next day which falls after the leap century, 1st January 2001, this will be Monday. The immediate day which follows the leap century, in other words, the first day of the year which follows the leap century will be Monday. For any leap century, this is the same rule. For example, you know, we know that 400 is a leap, leap century. So, 1st January 401 was a Monday. Same in case of 800. 1st January 801 will, was a Monday. Then, sorry, 1200. 1st January 1201, Monday. 1600, 1st January 1601, Monday, 2000, 1st January 2001 was a Monday. Again, it will come on, the next leap century would be on 2400 and 1st January 2401 will be a Monday. So, this is the first concept we have learned. So, now... The second concept is, is about the odd days. In the ending of the last lecture, we have seen that there are 365 days in a normal year and by dividing it with the number of days in a week, we get that there are 52 weeks in a year plus one day is the remainder. This one day is called the odd day. This one day, the remainder of the, the day in an year, after it has been exactly divided by uh, the number of days in a week, that is 7, it gives 52 weeks plus one day is the remainder, which is called the odd day. This is of significance for us. I will show you how. Before that, let's see. In a normal year, because there are 365 days, there will be one remainder, which is the one odd day. So, doing, applying the same principle for a leap year, there are 366 days in a leap year and automatically there will be two odd days in a leap year. This additional odd day, one odd day which, which is part of every year and the additional odd day is on February 29th. Divide 366 by 7 you will get 52 and plus 2 days remainder. These 2 days we are showing as the odd days. And there is uh, the third concept here. This is related to the second concept. It is regarding the odd days itself. We have seen the odd days per year. Monthly odd days we will be dealing in the concept of the concept 3. Monthly odd days. We have seen that in the in concept 2 we have seen the number of odd days in a normal year is 1. And the number of odd days in a leap year is 2. Now let us see the number of odd days monthly. In January there will be 3 odd days. January has 31 days. Divided by 7, there will be 4 weeks plus remainder of 3 days. So, this three, these 3 days is what we call the odd days. So, in January, there will be 3 odd days. In February, in a normal year, 
there won't be any odd day because in a normal year february contains 28 days divided by 7 it will exactly give 4 weeks so there will be no odd day in february in a normal year in case of a leap year there will be one odd day because in a leap year february contains the 29 days divided by 7 gives 4 weeks plus one remainder so in february there will be one odd day in march again march is just like january there are 31 days so there will be three odd days in april april contains 30 days so there will be two odd days 30 divided by 7 gives 4 plus 4 weeks plus 2 odd days may contains may is just like january again contains 3 odd days continuing the same principle june will have 2 2 odd days july will have 3 august will have 3 september will have 2 october will have 3 November will have 2 and December will have 3 odd days. These are the number of odd days in the month. How did we get this? We know the number of days in a month divided by 7 and whatever remainder is left, it will be the number of the odd days. In January, because the number of days is 31, in every month which, can, which has 31 days divided by 7, and we have a remainder of 3, those will be the odd days in all months having 31 days. In months having 30 divided by 7 will give 2 remainder, those months have 2 odd days. And in case of February, in a normal year, February has 28 days, it is exactly divisible by 7 to give 4 weeks. So there will be 0 odd day in February of a normal year. In case of a leap year, February has 29 days, so it will have one odd day so this is the concept of odd days when it comes to years and months now the concept number four will be the odd days for centuries don't go into details just remember this 100 will have 5 odd days, 200 will have 3 odd days, 300 will have 1 odd day and 400 will have 0. We have already seen this because 400 is a leap century, it will have 0 odd day and the next first day of the next year will be Monday. So this is the order, 100 will have 5 odd days, 200 will have 3, 300 will have 1, 400 will have 0. Similarly, 500 will have 5 odd days, 600 will have 3 odd days, 700 will have 1 odd day and 800 will have 0 odd days. This process repeats cyclically. 900 will have 5 odd days, 1000 will have 3 odd days, 1100 will have 1 odd day and 1200 will have 0 odd day. Thirteen hundred will have five odd days, fourteen hundred will have three odd days, fifteen hundred will have one odd day, and sixteen hundred will have zero odd days. It is a leap century. Seventeen hundred will have five odd days, eighteen hundred will have three odd days, nineteen hundred will have one odd day, and two thousand will have zero odd days. It's a leap century. And again, two thousand one hundred will have five odd days. 2300 will have 3, 2004, sorry, 2200 will have 3, 2300 will have 1, and 2400 will have 0 odd day. So, we have in this lecture we have seen the concept of odd days. What is an odd day? The remainder which is left after an year, a month, or a century is divided by the number of days in a week. The number of days in a week is 7. When an year is divided by the number of days in a week, the remainder gives the odd day. Because there are 365 days in a year, when it is divided by the number of days in a week, that is 7, gives 52 weeks and an additional one day, which we consider the odd day. So in a normal year, there will be one odd day. In case of a leap year, because there are 366 days, there will be two odd days. The additional odd day in the leap year 
is accommodated on February 29th. Then we come to the concept of odd days in month. In, the, in January, because there are 31 days, we have 4 weeks and 3 days. These 3 additional days are the odd days in January. In case of February, there are 28 days of, in February in a normal year, so which is exactly divisible by 7 giving 4 weeks. There will be no additional day in February and there will be no odd day in case of February in a normal year. When it comes to the leap year, there are 29 days in February and hence there will be one odd day in February. March as there are 31 days, there will be three odd days, April 2, May 3 and so on. You can do it easily. Concept number four, we come to the odd days for centuries. In case of centuries, remember 5310, 531 all are odd numbers, 531 and we have seen that the odd days for uh, century, leap century will be 0. So 105 odd days, 203, 301, 400, 0. All leap centuries will have 0 odd days. These are the concepts we have seen so far. So we have understood the concept of odd days. Then, what does that mean? There are three odd days or there are four odd days or there are five odd days. What is that of significance for us? By now you must have noticed that any odd day will be less than seven because we are dividing the uh, number whether the days in a month or the days in a week or the days in a year we are dividing the number with 7 therefore the reminder that is the odd days will always be 0 to 6 only only 0 to 6 will be the number of odd days 7 will never number never be an odd day because when we are dividing it by 7 that will be rounded off to a week and it won't stay as an odd day so these are the odd days and odd days will be always from 0 to 7. So what is this of significance for us? When you find that this is, let me just check which is the concept number. This is concept number 5. The concept number 5 deals with the significance of odd days. Concept 5. significance of odd days especially for us if the odd day is 1 if 1 is the odd day then it will be Monday the day will be Monday if the odd day is 2 it will be Tuesday if it is 3 Wednesday 4 Thursday, 5 Friday, 6 Saturday and finally 7 is, 7 won't be there that is 0 will be Sunday. So what I want to clarify here is that when they ask the question what day is 1st January 2001, if that day is 1, this is what we get after calculating the number of odd days. If the day falls on this number, the day will be Monday. After calculating the odd numbers, we have to include that particular day also. For example, the, if the question is, what day of the week is 1st January 2001? We know that 2000 is a leap century. So, number of odd days is 0. Now, what we, we have to find is the day of the week of 1st January. So, there are 0 odd days up to 2000 and plus we have to include the first day of January which we have to find this gives us 1 this is the final number we get not 0 
because 0 is the number of odd days up to 2000 that is up to 31st December 2000 there will be 0 odd days. Now we have to find the day of the day of the week in case of 1st January 2001. This first is the day we have to find. So we have to add this one here and the final number we get is 1. So this one the final number that we get that one is that which indicates the day of the week. If that falls on 1 that will be Monday, 2 Tuesday, 3 Wednesday and so on and 0 will be Sunday. I think you understood the concept. You will better understand if you have any doubts that will be clarified when you when we do some of the problems.